Well, we want to prove to you, sisters and brothers, in these last few minutes that Jesus is among us, but he's been hidden in plain sight. Now, you know, three or four weeks ago, Brother Ishmael was talking about the counterintelligence program. While we might have a hard time seeing a Messiah coming from black people, J. Edgar Hoover and the U.S. government, go and look it up, COINTELPRO, which stands for Counterintelligence Program. That should have been a red flag already. How can you counter means against? How can you have a program that's against intelligence and it be a good program? But in the COINTELPRO, J. Edgar Hoover said that his number one objective was to prevent the rise of a black messiah. So the government of America was looking for a messiah. Yes, they, yes, they were. The government of America, Trump, and the synagogue of Satan, Trump, and the satanic Jew, Trump, and the Talmudic Jew, all of them know today, whenever they look, they are looking for the black Messiah, and they know they found who he is. In the person of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, they know what they're looking at. Our problem is, it seems like when you research history and scripture, the enemies of God, have always recognized the man of God before the people of God. Oh man, that's, that's rough. The enemies of God have always recognized the man of God before the people of God who the man of God came from among and was designed to show them the way to become the people of God. So in the scripture, before Moses was even born, Pharaoh said, kill all the firstborn boy babies. Why? Because Pharaoh knew what he was doing in Egypt land to bring about as a cause the effect of the intervention in the form of a messenger named Moses. During the time of King Herod, he said, kill all of the boy babies two years old and under. He was trying to make sure that he got them. Well, Herod knew Jesus was coming before the people Jesus came to teach. Pharaoh knew that Moses was coming before the people that Moses came to teach knew. And unfortunately, brothers and sisters, our enemy has known who the servant of God is in our midst today before we have recognized it. But today is the day, now is the time we are at that moment in our history where if we are willing to recognize who the servant of God is, who the messianic man of the moment is, who the Jesus is among us today, we can become free overnight. Well, you say, how can you prove, you said mathematically and scripturally and oh, how are you gonna prove that he is that? In mathematics, there is something called the law of probability. And in the law of probability, when you compare two objects to one another, if you can find 12 or more details in each object that are identical to the other, you are looking at the same object just at a different place and at a different time. I want to put Jesus up on one side. And I want you to look at the character of Farrakhan on the other side. And let's see if by the law of probability we can find a match. Well, Jesus was a black man. The minister is a black man. It says Jesus was born in a manger. Well, what is a manger? A manger is where animals dwell. Is not America the habitation of devils and the cage for every unclean and hateful? This is a nation where, where if the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called this the wilderness of North America because it's people here that act like animals. America is a manger. It says that he will be born of a virgin mother. 
Well, virgin doesn't always mean a person that has not had sexual intercourse. In the store, they have virgin olive oil. They have virgin daiquiris, virgin pina coladas. In, in real estate, there's something called virgin territory. This is territory that is uncultivated or undeveloped. Well, black people, before the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was raised from among us, we were an uncultivated people. But after the most honorable Elijah Muhammad came, we became cultivated. So we have been, been as black people in America, a virgin people. Did you know the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that we came from Africa and we were absent of a messenger or prophet as a people for 50,000 years? That's a virgin territory. That's a virgin people. Well, what else did Jesus do? He made the blind see. He made the dumb speak. He made the lame walk. And he raised the dead for life. Now, now this wasn't Jesus putting on some magic show. It wasn't no touch somebody in hocus pocus shazam, you healed. According to the scripture, Jesus made 1,900 statements. He's taught on 200 subjects, put his disciples on 41 missions, and he performed 40 miracles. And out of the 40 miracles that he performed, only two of them he actually laid hands on somebody. And technically, really only one because the other one was the time that he had found a man that was called a blind man. And when he went to the blind man, he asked the blind man, how do you see men? Well, if the man is really blind, blind, his answer would be, I don't see men at all, I'm blind. But his answer was, I see men as trees. This means that it was not something wrong with the man's two eyes. It was something wrong with his third eye or his mind's eye. His perception was damaged. And it says that Jesus wiped some spittle on his eyes and then asked the, that man, how now do you see men? And he said, I now see men as they are. Well, spittle is the white foam that develops in the mouth of someone that is teaching. So Jesus didn't literally touch on him. He taught him all of the miracles that you read about deaf hearing, dumb speaking, lame walking, curing someone of leprosy, raising the dead to life, making blind people see. These were not magic tricks. This was him giving them a teaching to fix a spiritual problem that matched having your third eye blind that matched having your third ear deaf. It's one thing to hear, it's another thing to be able to listen. It's one thing to be able to, to, to speak phonically and marry sound, it's another thing to have something to say. So if a person is able to talk but they don't have wisdom, they still are considered a dumb person that needs to be taught. Likewise, a lame man is someone that can't use his legs properly to get where he needs to go. That is the way that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan found us. He found us in the wilderness of North America, Caucasianized and Westernized and hit in the head and robbed and spoiled, and we were lame. We had no aim or purpose. But after we were taught the life-giving teachings, of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, we began to walk with aim and purpose. We were lame, but now we are walking. All praises are due to Allah. Well, that was 10 of them right there. Out of the 12, he came, Jesus, that you might have life and life more abundantly. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan have taught, explained, and exemplified something called how to eat to live. That is how you can secure life and even a more abundant life. What else matches? They ask Jesus, they say, how come this is a man without letters, yet he has learned? 
The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was not made by the colleges and the universities of this world. The, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was taught by a man that only went to the fourth grade of school. Think about that for a minute. How could you be taught by a man that only went to the fourth grade of school and have the wisdom and the power that you see exhibited from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? I submit that during the time, according to the scripture, the so-called Jews of yesterday, they didn't like Jesus either. And these so-called Jews of today have a problem with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So if there are 12 or more details by the law of probability that match identical one from another, that means you are looking at the same person just at a different space and at a different time. Farrakhan is a Jesus in our midst today. He is the one that will get us safely across this lake of fire to the other side. Well, Jesus told the world that I am the bread of life. In church, when you do communion, you eat the bread, which represents, they say, his flesh, and then you drink the wine, which represents his blood. But this is a parable, brothers and sisters. To eat flesh will make us a cannibal. To drink blood will make us a vampire. What this means is that the life that he lives, blood, is so pristine and so perfect that he becomes the criterion and the supreme example of what life should be lived. That is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The bread, staff of life, is the word. Anytime that you hear a message or read the words of wisdom from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you are well fed by the grace of Allah. In Matthew 4 and 4, it reads that man cannot live off of bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. It ain't about bread that you get in a loaf of flour, from flour. It's about the word of God. And because we have one in our midst that has been feeding on the word of God and living the life in accord with the way of God, like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you are what you eat. And he has become that word of God and that way of God in human form. We can trust that he's that bread of life. Then it says, Jesus told the world that I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have, have everlasting life. Well, look at these words of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in description of the minister. He said, out of all of my ministers, I will take that man. I want to prove to Satan that my minister is a greater light to the world of man than you and your world's man, the whole of them. And we bear witness, those of us that have been recipients of the light, that there is no greater light that has ever been shined on our mind than the light that has come from the mind of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In the universe, the greatest light is the sun. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said it's 93 million miles away from the earth. It's 853,000 miles in diameter. It burns at 14,072 degrees with 10 to 20,000 mile high flames coming off of its surface. And a ray of light travels at the speed of 186,000 miles per second. And because it's moving at that speed in, in, in in eight minutes and 30 seconds, it can make it from the sun all the way to the earth and strike the earth's equator, causing the earth to begin to make a revolution on its own axis at 1,037 and one-third miles per hour. Well, whenever the light hits you, you begin to make progress, you begin to make motion. Light provides sight. 
The sun provides energy. The, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that in the light of the sun, there are billions of vitamins and nutrients. The nutrients in the sun know how to activate the nutrients found in the vegetables and the fruit. So whenever the light of the sun strikes the blueberry, it resurrects the antioxidants in it and makes it of service to the rest of us. Whenever the light of the sun strikes the orange, it activates the vitamin C within the orange. So it is, whenever you begin to feed on the message that Allah has sent to us through the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, you'll find that your gifts, skills, and qualities, your nutrients will begin to be activated and you will be of service to yourself family and to your people. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. When one applies the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as explained and exemplified by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, you began to become a producer in life. You have access to pastures. I am the good shepherd. Well, what is the good shepherd? He's the one that lays down his life for the sheep. Look at the high level of service and sacrifice of this beautiful man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Has he not given his life for us? And see, that's, that's something that could be tweaked in the brain of us that really want to follow Jesus. One of the things that puts us in the cheerleader mode is that we always say, Jesus died for me. And once you say he died for me, we start focusing on the last 24 hours of his existence. But there's another way of saying it. If you say he gave his life for me, then you don't focus on that last 24 hours called the passion of Christ. You began to look at the way he treated children the way he treated women, the way he dealt with the governments and the rulers, the way he entertained and the way he helped the poor and the oppressed. Well, in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you've got that good shepherd that has given his life for you and me.